what are the essential things that you need to bring to your first gig? Hey everyone, I'm Jack Fawcett and welcome to Real Guitar Talk. This is the series where I tackle real life uh, situations and, and thoughts about being a modern guitar player in ways that I haven't heard before. Now, my last Real Guitar Talk video, we were talking about how much gear do you actually need. That sort of went down the philosophical end. That that was uh, very much a musing kind of video, um, thinking really deeply about how we need music in our lives and consumerism. So I thought it would be good to follow that one up with an extremely practical, pragmatic video. And something that some people have asked me is like, hey, what do you actually need to bring? Now, the interesting thing about this subject is, to a certain extent, I can't answer that because it is what you need for your particular setup. You know, a singer-songwriter is going to need to bring something completely different than someone who's in a, a rock band. So I'm not going to get into specifics that way, but what I do want to talk about are some of the essentials that I don't ever want to go to a gig without. And this is what I bring. I actually have this, this handy grab bag here. It's not even that big. This is actually, my wife's a canon lawyer. This is a canon law society of America bag that she got at one of her conventions. So I, I've always used it for, for my uh, gig essentials or my uh, emergency gig bag. The most important thing to remember when you're getting ready for a gig, and, and you know, this could also be, hey, if you're a seasoned player who's done tons of gigs, hopefully this helps you out too. This is not just for people who, who do their first gig. The show must go on. And I always remember something that my father told me too, because my father used to do seminars, and he said, when something goes wrong technically, it always reflects poorly on the performer, and it doesn't matter if it's their fault or not, because in the audience, all you know is something's wrong, and the person on stage that you see is the only person you kind of have to associate with that. You know, they don't think about the tech people. They, they're not... Some Maybe some audience members might appreciate that a sound guy could get things wrong here and there, but for the most part, if something goes wrong... It doesn't look good for the band or the performer on stage. And so you want to find ways to absolutely minimize anything that could go wrong. Really what that means is having a lot of backup stuff. I've had tube amps go on me. I've had strings break. I've had, you know, you name it. You've had, had power problems. Whatever has gone wrong has gone wrong for me. And you want to be able to get the show back online as quickly and as seamlessly as possible. So, in that vein, this is what I bring in my emergency gig bag. First of all, a couple of things, you know, just a little housekeeping stuff. It never hurts to have uh, an extra cloth in there, you know, microfiber cloth or, or what have you. The first thing that's important, because these go easily, I've had it happen a number of times, is to bring extra cables. So whatever it is that you need. So here I have an XLR cable. After the XLR, this is one you might not think of. I have an extra pedal patch cable. And then of course, a quarter inch patch. I actually don't have it in the bag right now because I was kind of going through it earlier, but an extra lead cable, an extra quarter inch patch cable that can go from your guitar to your amp. You know, usually you want one that's gonna be at least 10 feet. By the way, there are links to all the stuff in the description, those are affiliate links. Some of them are to music sites, some of them are to Amazon. You do any shopping through those links, it supports my channel. It doesn't cost anything extra to you. So if you're looking to, to bolster your gig emergency bag and you do some shopping through that link, that helps me out. And I am going to link to less expensive stuff. You don't need your emergency gig bag to have the highest end stuff. You just need something that's going to get you through to the end of the gig. This is one that a lot of people wouldn't think of. Power cable. You know how many times I, I have needed something like that, whether it's for your amplifier or it's for part of the PA or, you know, whatnot. This is another one, too. It's like, have, have extra microphones. Bring an extra uh, mic for your guitar. Bring an extra mic for your vocals if you need it. If you're somebody who sings, even if you don't sing, bring an extra one just because you know your singer's not going to. Singers are irresponsible. They're so full of themselves. It's like they don't even... I'm the singer in my group, so this is... That's where... It, it's no, it's fine. It's fine. It's supposed to be self-deprecating humor, but now people are offended. I'm, I'm getting off track. I always bring, this is great. Actually, this is a Fender brand one. I bring this extra fold up guitar stand because guitar stands are bulky. And when you're getting all your stuff in your car, you know, what's one of the things I've forgotten the most 
is the guitar stand. It's just a regular guitar stand. It also doesn't hurt to bring extra mic stands and stuff, but obviously those don't fit in the bag. The reason I like this one is because it's this little fold-up. Obviously it doesn't fit every guitar. This is designed to fit a Fender. It will fit a bunch of Gibsons and things. Obviously it won't hold an acoustic guitar, but that's really good to have. An extra strap, because I've forgotten straps before. It's always good to have an extra strap. And another thing, I absolutely love this stuff, just in case anyone else has ever used this. Fast fret. Fast fret is really good for keeping your strings from getting gunky, from getting to squeaky. Uh, you know, if you played your guitar at the gig last night and then, you know, you threw it in your case because you were tired and then you bring it out, you know, for your next gig and the strings just feel kind of ugh. This will slick it right up. It'll get rid of some of that residue. I also use Elixir strings, and between the fast fret and the Elixir strings, my strings are always just nice and smooth. None of this is sponsored, by the way. I've never met the fast fret people. I've never talked to them before, but this is something that I kind of can't live without. I always like to have fast fret around. Now, when you talk about getting into your actual rig, this is where it starts to get, uh, doesn't necessarily get tricky, but this is where I will kind of diverge from some other people. I'm somebody who likes pedals. I usually run an amp clean and a pedal board. I went to a gig once and I was just not getting any sound from my pedal board. And I have no idea why I tried to figure out if there was a patch cable that was wrong. Luckily, I had an amp that could overdrive on its own. It was a Vox amp, so I just dialed it in a little bit differently at this particular gig. But I've, I've played gigs where I'm just using a clean amp that I really can't get overdrive from unless I play it at the, you know, the, like Greg Cock would say, at the crazy pagan rock warlord volumes. So what do you do then? I This is my backup. This is my kind of pedal of honor in its own way, which is funny because I use it less than others, but... A TS9 with a 9 volt battery. I always have this with me because I know that no matter what, if something goes wrong with my pedal board, I can plug a couple of patch cables into this and I can, I could play a whole gig with a TS9. It's not necessarily, you know, so there's some songs I like to use a fuzz for, some songs I like to use, you know, this or that for, but if I really got down to it, this would be all that I would need to get through the gig and I could absolutely do it and feel comfortable. So this is like, even though I use it less because it's my backup, this is sort of my pedal of honor. It's like my, I always know I'm going to be okay because I have a TS9 with a nine volt battery in it. By the way, you know, it wouldn't hurt to bring a small toolkit with you that has some Allen wrenches uh, and even some screwdrivers. I don't always have that with me. Part of the reason is because one of the guys in my band is also extremely well prepared and he has everything. So between the two of us, I've honestly slacked a little on bringing some extra stuff in, in recent years, but you should have all this stuff with you. Just be ready for anything. Now, getting back to the rig, I don't bring extra strings and I don't bring extra tubes. Some people say they can't live without that. Here's what I do instead. I bring more than one guitar and I bring a backup amp, a small backup amp. The one that I bring most frequently is the Blues Junior. The reason that I do that is because, again, you want the show to go on as quickly and seamlessly as possible. The idea of changing a tube at a gig to me is utterly ridiculous. And, you know, for, forgive me for those of you who have done this before and, and made it work, but, you know, like a lot of my amps, like, in order to change the tubes, you need to take the whole back panel off. Some of them you can't even really get to without, like, moving the chassis around and stuff. I'm not going to do that at a gig when people are waiting to hear music. If a tube blows, and yeah, that has happened to me multiple times, if a tube goes at a gig or something's wrong with your amp, I move that amp and I put another one in its place. Now, obviously, for an amplifier, that's a bit of weight. You know, the Blues Junior is not that bad. And, and, you know, most people, it doesn't hurt to have a small combo amp. The other way you can get away with this, and this is something I've also done because uh, I, you know, use this stuff too, but like to have a, you know, like a Line 6 HX Stomp or, or even if it's just some, some pedal that gives you IR capabilities that you can plug directly into a PA. Basically something that can very quickly be put in the place of an amplifier that goes bad. And it's the same with guitars. I don't want to be changing strings between songs. I just want to put that guitar down and pick up another guitar. Now obviously, you know, I have a pretty nice collection of guitars, but I would venture to guess most of you have more, at least a couple guitars. It's better to bring two guitars and to just be able 
to swap really quickly to the next one than it is to take time changing strings. Now, you know, if you only bring a couple guitars, maybe it's still good to bring an extra set of strings. I personally don't. I, I actually pretty much always bring three guitars to every gig. And I almost never break strings because I have a pretty light touch on the guitar. But again, the point is bring backups for everything so that if something goes wrong, you can very quickly take care of the problem, get right back to playing, and in a way that doesn't throw you. You don't want to be mentally thrown because then your songs afterwards aren't going to sound good because your mind is not going to be there. You're going to be flustered. You're going to be sweating. Your heart's going to be pounding. It's going to get gross and ugly and people are going to be like, he smells and his music isn't very good. And nobody wants that. So just have, have whatever you need that could possibly go wrong. And the funny thing is, is if you have what you need, then nothing's going to go wrong, right? Because if you're prepared, nothing's going to go wrong. If you're not prepared, everything's going to go wrong. It's uh, Murphy's Law. So if you have an emergency gig bag like I do, please let us know. Let us know what you put in your gig bag. What, what, or what do you put in your emergency bag? What do you bring with you in case something goes wrong? Or are you just a totally insane person who flies by the seat of your pants? And you're like, you know what? If it all goes down in a blaze of fiery glory, at least I'll have a good story from it. I'm Jack Fawcett. This was Real Guitar Talk, and we'll see you next time.